Ireland joined the European Economic Community on the 1st of January of 1973 as the poorest region of the British regional economy, if I might put it in a context. And it managed over the course of several decades from a combination of good policy and good luck to arrive in a spot where it was one of the richest regions and states in the European Union. I certainly think we have been contributors of substance. Uh, we have led a number of presidencies that have been extraordinary successes at times of some definition. Uh, I can think of uh, Gareth Fitzgerald and the Lomé Convention to do with solidarity questions and African, Caribbean and Pacific states. Uh, I can think of uh, the most recent one, of course, in, in the issues around the constitutional treaty uh, and uh, the contribution of an Irish presidency to resolving outstanding questions on that. And uh, in, uh, there, there have been, through the presidencies, uh, Rory Quinn many years ago, through the presidency when we were establishing Economic and Monetary Union, there were unresolved arguments coming to a Dublin summit meeting about the rules of engagement for monetary union, and, and we closed out with a plus. So these have been big European contributions, led by Ireland, a small state that didn't have jagged edges. I think in the European Parliament, of people who've acted as rapporteur uh, on reports, who've been the leaders, uh, the thought leaders for the Parliament on those issues, and have uh, made powerful contributions. Most recently, perhaps if I could pick an example, we've had a climate change package, which will have major implications for how we do things into the future. And one of the major elements in that was about emissions trading. What do you do with carbon and how you trade that system? The European Union has passed legislation on this. And the leader of that legislation in the European Parliament, which had weighty influence and a significant number of amendments carried in the final law, was an Irish MEP, Avril Doyle. And uh, in a personal sense, to be able to serve in the Parliament as a, a representative from Munster for, for three terms, uh, but also as a leader of a group for uh, part of two terms, uh, and as the leader of the House. And if statistics were the only issue in Europe, no Irish person should do any of those things because we are statistically insignificant in the enterprise. Uh, we are, if we were an opinion poll, in the margin of error scale of statistics. And I'm making the point not about self, but about process. If we engage, they are open to engage with us at the highest level. Uh, in the uh, civil service itself, uh, today and before uh, for the previous five years, the most senior public servant of the European Commission, the Secretary General of the Commission, uh, is an Irish person, now Catherine uh, Day, uh, but before that David O'Sullivan. Uh, we have in the cabinets today, when the commissioners uh, uh, prepare uh, for uh, commission meetings, when they're uh, working their way through the politics of the work that they do, they have a cabinet, a staff of private advisors, many Irish work in cabinets, and in four of the cabinets today, uh, they're led by Irish chef of cabinet, even though there's only one Irish commissioner. And so, uh, does that say you punch above your weight? I think probably it does, but they're not in there every day punching as Ireland. But the useful thing is when Ireland needs to throw a punch or avoid one, uh, they're useful people to have around.